This lesson illustrates another application of the work energy theorem, in particular, uh, what, how to use the work energy theorem in cases where there's more than one force doing work at the same time. So uh, remember from the previous lesson that the work energy theorem says that the net work that's done uh, by an object is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy. Now, if only one force is doing work, then the work done by that force is equal to the network, and this is pretty simple. But uh, what if there's more than one force that's doing work? So uh, for that, let's do an example of the case where uh, we have a person <coughs> who is pushing a box across the floor. Okay, and uh, let's say that we are pushing this box with a force of 30 newtons. Uh, and there is uh, a coefficient of friction between the box and the floor of 0 0.1, and that would be a coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay. And the box weighs 5 kilograms. And let's say that the person is going to push the box a distance of 10 meters. Uh, what I want to do is let's find the work done on the box uh, by the force of the push, which we'll call FP, uh, by friction. by gravity and by the normal force. Um, also, I want to find the speed of the box after 10 meters. So after it's been slid across the floor at 10 meters. Okay, so first, let's find the work done by the force of the push and uh, friction. So remember, work is equal to force times displacement times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. So for the work done, due to the push, we have FP times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. Now, that's not necessarily uh, the 30 degree angle here. And just because there's a 30 degree angle given in the problem, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the angle between the force and the displacement. Uh, in this case, it happens to be. Because the force is like this, and the displacement is horizontal, like that. So the angle between the force and the displacement is, in fact, the 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Okay, so these two. Uh, thetas are both the same. So the work due to the push is going to equal the force of the push, 30 newtons, times the displacement, 10 meters, times the cosine, 30 degrees. That means that the work due to the push is 30 times 10, which is 300 times the cosine of 30, which is 
Okay, so we have 300 times 0.87, and that gives us 261 newton meters or 261 joules. All right, uh, how about the work done by friction? Well, the work done by friction is going to equal the force of friction times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the frictional force and the displacement. I'm going to give that angle a different name. So we already used theta to represent the angle between the push and the displacement. So let's call this angle phi. That's the angle between friction and the displacement. Okay, well, friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction, because the box is sliding, times the normal force. And because the box is not accelerating in the y direction, that means that the sum of the forces in the y direction uh, is equal to zero. Right? The acceleration in the y direction is zero. Uh, the forces on the box in the y direction are the uh, normal force up. We have the uh, force of the push in the y direction down. And we have gravity down. Those are all equal to zero. I have then that the normal force is equal to Fpy plus Fg. Uh, so we can substitute that in down here for the normal force. The work on the box due to friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction, which we have said is equal to 0 0.1. The normal force is the y component of the push plus the force of gravity, Fg. Uh, D is the displacement, 10 meters, and cosine of phi. Phi is the angle between friction and the displacement. Well, the displacement is to the right, and if the displacement is to the right, then friction always opposes the uh, sliding motion. So friction is to the left. Uh, the angle between those two is 180 degrees. The cosine of 180 is negative 1. So this term will be a minus 1. All right, well, we're almost done. We just need to figure out what Fpy and Fg are. Uh, Fpy, let's see if Fp is 30 newtons at a 30 degree angle, then Fpy will be 30 degrees times the sine, or 30 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees. So we have the work due to friction equals 0 0.1 times 30 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees plus Fg. Well, Fg is the mass of the box, 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, then we multiply that by 10 meters times negative 1. Okay, so we need to add up all of these things. Uh, 
the sine of 30 degrees is a half. Uh, so let's see, we're going to have the work due to friction is minus, because of the negative one term, uh, 0 0.1 times uh, sine of 30 is a half, so that'd be 15 newtons. And 5 times 9.8 is 49. So that's plus 49 newtons uh, times 10 meters. 15 plus 49 is 64. 64 times 10 times negative 0.1 is negative 64 joules. So the work due to friction on the box is negative 64 joules. The negative sign simply means that friction is removing energy from the system. Okay, the push that we found earlier was adding energy to the box. Friction is taking energy away from the box. That's why one of them is positive and the other is negative. Okay. Uh, so we've done this part. We found the work due to the push. We found the work due to friction. Now let's find the work due to gravity and the normal force. Well, uh, those are both zero because gravity is straight down okay, and the displacement is to the right. There's a 90 degree angle between those two and cosine of 90 is zero. So gravity does no work on the box in this case. The same is true for the normal force. The normal force is up. The displacement is to the right. We have a 90 degree angle there. Cosine of 90 is zero. So the normal force does no work either. It, uh, both of those are zero. All right, uh, finally, uh, find the speed of the box. For that, we'll use the work energy theorem. Yeah, I'm going to have to erase some of these things here to uh, get some more space. All right. So, using the work energy theorem, the net work is equal to the box's change in kinetic energy. Well, the net work would be the work due to the push and the work due to friction. So that would be 261 joules due to the push minus the 64 joules due to friction. That's equal to the box's change in kinetic energy, well, so which would be uh, its final kinetic energy minus its initial kinetic energy. Uh, and I didn't state this at the beginning of the problem, but I intended for the box to be at rest when it was starting. Uh, so that means that the initial kinetic energy is equal to zero. 261 minus 64 will be 197 joules. 197 joules is the net work done on the box. That must be equal to one half the mass of the box times the speed of the box squared. Okay, uh, so you multiply both sides by two, divide both sides by five, uh, so two times. 197, that would be 3, let's see, that's 394, then uh, divide that by 5, okay, so we have 394, divided by 5, you have 78.8, so we have V, F is equal to 78. 8.8, that's actually Vf squared, so Vf will be equal to the square root of 78.8, or 8.9 meters per second. 8.9 
meters per second. All right, so the work due to the push, 261 joules. The work due to friction, negative 64. The net work on the box is 197. And therefore, the final speed of the box is 8.9 meters per second. And that is an example of how you can use the work energy theorem in situations where there's more than one force acting on the system.